Hello again. So in this video, we are going to be talking about bonding and antibonding orbitals. So this kind of follows on from what we talked about in the last video about orbitals and hybridization just a little bit. But this is going to focus on more about what are the different orbitals that form when you form a molecular bond. OK, so when it comes to atomic orbitals, they have two phases. So the same way as when you draw electrons and one electron has the phase of being up and the other electron has the phase of being down, your orbitals have the same properties as well. So there's a few different ways that this can be depicted. So the one I've shown here is when the orbital is drawn as a solid line, that is one phase, and when it's a dotted line, that's the other phase. A few other ways that people like to draw them, just so you recognize them when you see them, Sometimes you can simply use different colors. So often they're say black or white. You might have some where they're shaded in. So in this case, it's not very clear because I've used the same color, but they might be both drawn as black circles and then one will be shaded in and the other one won't. Or sometimes the orbitals are marked as being plus or minus. For the purposes of this video, however, we're just going to use the full line and the dashed line, okay? So if you imagine that these two orbitals come from one hydrogen atom and these two orbitals come from another hydrogen atom, okay? In this case, the orbitals are in phase. So when the two hydrogen atoms get very close to each other, what will happen is they will form an overlapping bond called a sigma bond. So they both donate one electron, because if you remember what a 1s orbital for a proton looks like, it has one electron because it's the first atom on the periodic table. So what happens here is both protons or both hydrons donate a single electron. So both of the electrons live in here in the space in between the two hydrogen atoms. And this is referred to as the bonding orbital. Now, what happens when the orbitals are out of phase? So in this case here, and this happens at the exact same time as this one down here. Okay. If, for example, this hydrogen atom has, say, a full line phase or a positive phase, and this one has a negative phase or it's dashed, they cannot overlook each other. OK, so they have a destructive interference with each other. So what ends up happening is even though they come close together, you get a node. And what I mean by a node is that the orbitals will actually change shape, so they're not perfectly spherical anymore. And now there's this space in the middle that has no electrons in it. And this is called the node. OK, so what does this look like in terms of an energy diagram? So if you have one proton on the left, OK, or sorry, hydrogen. So the term hydrogen and proton is often interchanged when it only has a single electron. So without having made a bond. And then if you have another 1s orbital over here, so again, this will have one electron in it, okay? So these will start off as the same energy. So just to be clear, the x-axis here is energy, which I'm depicting with E, and the higher up the orbital, the higher in energy it is, and the lower down it goes, the lower in energy it is. So in the case of the bonding orbital, which is depicted here, so what happens is, is both orbitals will come together and combine to form a new orbital. And both electrons are going to go and join this together. And this is the bonding orbital. And this should be quite uh, clear because when two hydrogens form an atom, sorry, form a, uh, a molecule, what you have is you have a bond in between where the two electrons are shared by both hydrogens at the same time. And that's what's depicted here. However, what's very important in chemistry is conservation. So if you started with two orbitals, you have to finish with two orbitals. So if this one is going to go down in energy, there has to be basically an equivalent or a mirror. So what happens is, is that another orbital will be formed that is much higher in energy. And this is called the antibonding orbital. So generally speaking, you won't normally find electrons in the antibonding orbital. And the reason for that is if you started to add electrons to the antibonding orbital, 
the energy the molecule gets by having these stable electrons down here ends up being negated by the extra energy that would be in electrons up here. So if you fill the antibonding orbital with electrons, you will break the bond. One way to do that, for example, is by adding lots and lots of energy. So you start to heat up or, for example, shine light on a molecule. And in this case, if one of these electrons were to end up here, you would have one electron on the top, one electron on the bottom, and then the bond will be broken because there is no energy being saved. So that's a bit of an introduction to bonding and antibonding orbitals. And I'm going to have another video then on a more complicated example of methane. So just remember that this is all for trying to raise money for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland. We're currently doing really well, nearly up at 150 euro. But if you want to see more videos and more content covering uh, basic organic chemistry, please do continue to donate. And the link to the GoFundMe is in the description below.